of uh, Dynamics uh, consultant. I've been working in the industry for more than 10 years. I am also MVP, MCT, and the, and also the active contributor to the Dynamics community. If you want to reach out to me, uh, you can reach out to me all over LinkedIn. You can write an email. Uh, I also do some YouTube blogs and also do some writing on my blog site. So if you want to follow uh, the content, you can just uh, follow here. Today's agenda, uh, we will be talking about what exactly this business performance analytics is. Then we will be talking about the process architecture involved in this uh, app and this whole capability. Then we'll talk about the data architecture and then we will have some demo and then the Q&A in the end. But if you have got any question, feel free to put in the chat and uh, we'll try to answer as soon as possible. All the content which I'm using here, uh, uh, it's available on Microsoft Learn. So there is a dedicated Learn page, which is there for the content around the business performance analytics. And also there is a tech talk from the Microsoft, which is available, which you can explore. So now uh, without uh, further delay, let's start talking about what is the business process analytics. Uh, it's not business process, sorry, that's typo, business performance analytics. So we can call it as a BPA. So now uh, let's take a step back and think about the implementations which we do as consultant when we go to the customers. Over the years, Microsoft has improved on the business application, the Dynamics CCFNO in, in, in many ways. They have released a lot of good features, the capabilities, the automations and everything. So everything is fine, but what about the reporting and analytics capabilities which we have in Dynamics? And that is one thing where uh, the customer always reach out to us and ask about the different types of report, the capabilities which we have. And moreover, they ask the flexibility of doing the reporting by themselves based on the data which they are recording. Currently, if you understand the reporting capabilities in Dynamics, uh, it is more like which we have like like we have a scattered type. I mean, a scattered reports uh, capability we have some SSRS reports which possibly might not so much useful as of now. Uh, we have some inquiries reporting which are available on the forms. We have some financial reports. We have some uh, uh, Power BI embedded report. But if you look at this holistically, you do not have a single reporting capability where you give the flexibility to your customer to 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 do the reporting for their business which for on top of the transactions which they are recording now the business performance analytics uh, helps us in solving that problem and it's a good step from the microsoft side it has been a very long time they have released any capability around this area but now we have something to talk about with our customers now if we talk about what is the uh, objective. So if he, the problem which I have spoke, uh, spoken like data is spread across the different systems. Uh, uh, it is very hard to get the data correlate and create reports. Uh, always you need a developer or a technical support for developing and uh, creating the report. Uh, finding insights in the data is very time consuming, right? So these are the critical or the key problems, some of the problems which we have uh, in the system as of now. Now, based on this business performance analytics, uh, we can solve all these things. And what it is going to give us this, this it is going to give us an impactful outcome with the advanced analytics. It is going to turn the data into actions to improve business performance. Now, how it has been designed? So any analytic uh, uh, or the data analytics is, is incomplete without the data warehousing. So the data warehousing is the backbone for this particular tool and how it helps us is centralized data, providing centralized data, efficient reporting, enhanced analytics and regulatory compliances. 
right? So that's the that's the overview about the business performance analytics which we have. But what is the guide? What are the guiding principles around this, right? What are the key pillars based on which this particular tool has been designed for you, for for you, for the uses, right? So there are three different categories. They have Microsoft has kept in mind. One is the delightfulness, like it gives the priority to the users, the user experience, the collaboration among the users, right? That is the main priority by the Microsoft while designing this particular tool. Next is the data driven and the trustworthy, right? So you your data should be current. There should be a control available within the data which you are using, which means it comes with a, a role based security access, and I will be talking about that. And that is the uh, best feature I think I can say about uh, this particular tool. And the last one is the extensibility of this particular tool. So this comes out of the box with all the data and the transactions which you have within the Dynamics 365, but it also gives you the flexibility that you can uh, you can you can extend this particular model to the any external data source or the ex existing data model within your fabric environment, which if you are having, you can merge with that and you can do the combined reporting with multiple data sets. So that is the uh, that is about your what BPA offers to you. What is the problem we are trying to solve? Uh, how we are trying to solve and what are our guiding principles to solve this particular problem? If I move to the next slide, uh, this particular tool has been designed keeping the value chain uh, model in 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 mind. Now, when we talk about the value chain model, is nothing but that all the data models which are designed for this particular tool are based on our business processes. Now, if you talk about Dynamics application, what are the key business processes you have? So you have record to report. Procure to pay, order to cash, card to retire, plan to close. So all these are your different processes. So your data models, which are designed in this particular tool, are really focused based on these business processes. So the business processes has been the center for designing these data models. Now, if we further go down uh, and, and look at these business processes, then the this value chain has been again having the data value chain, which is mostly we can call it as a sub processes within those business processes. So if you talk about the procure to pay, now it involves multiple business processes, sub processes. So for example, it has the purchase requisition, the purchase order, the receiving, invoicing and payment. So your data model has been grouped with the business process and then further re further divided into the sub business processes which you have under those business processes and why it has been done it has been done so that the data, so that the granular level of the of the information can be accommodated in the data model so when you want to do the reporting you have all the information available for you so you are not restricted at a top level you have the information from the granular level of the transaction now you can do the bottom up reporting you can do the reporting at any level within that value chain or within that business process which you have in this system as of now as i said this particular uh, this particular feature, the capability is in preview, so which means it is not a GA release as of now. And uh, the currently the two business processes which are uh, available, if you will install this particular application, are the record to report and the procure to pay. Microsoft is planning to release the capabilities around order to cash and the acquire to retire as well in uh, coming days. Now we have spoken about that data models are created in the data warehouse and then we also uh, understood that these models are uh, based on the business processes and the sub processes. But 
in those business processes and sub processes, if I want to talk about the key component which we need to understand as user, then what are those key key concepts which we have it right? So there are two things which you need to understand before you start using this tool. So one is the fact uh, table and the dimension table. So any data model you create for analytics, you need to have these two type of tables available. Fact table is nothing but it is on what you want to do the analysis, right? So I want to do the analysis on my amount on my quantity, right? So any numerical value generally you can call it as a will be part of your fact table. Now, for example, you have the sales amount, the quantity. Now, if I want to analyze this, then I need to slice and dice this particular data. And then how I want to slice and dice this data is derived by my dimension table. So which means I want to know my sales amount by the product, product category, product group, by customer, customer location, the customer region, the customer group. Now all these different types of the slice and dice of the by, by which we are doing the data slice and dice will be part of your dimension table. And how your fact and dimensions are connected with each other, they are connected with the key which are available here. So the fact table will have a product key, but the dimension table will have a product table where all the information, the further attributes or the detailed attribute for that particular table will be available. So for example, the product name, category, product group, and all those things will be available in dimension table, but the key, the unique key, which is connecting with the sales amount and the quantity will be the key and the unique key, which is common in both the tables, right? So before you start using this particular tool, it is very important for you to understand these concepts. How the data is being uh, data is being flowing here, like how the what's the data architecture here? So it is bit technical. I'm not going to talk about a lot of technical things here, but uh, as we know, in any of the data activity, we have three major components: the extract, transform, and load, right? So which is the ETL process. So first thing is that uh, you have the Dynamics database where you are recording your transactions which gets stored in your data entities. Now, from there, the extraction happens to your virtual entities which are available in Dynamics 365 or the Power Platform, right? So the data get uh, extracted to virtual entities. So till here, your extraction process. After this, this data entity, uh, the virtual entity data getting transformed uh, to an analytical table through the different bad jobs using the managed data lake here. So now that data gets transformed and create get loaded to a Power BI data set or PBI data set. You can say, or you can see a data warehouse model. Basically, it gets loaded there. And now from there, you can use this particular data set for doing uh, for for creating your reports, which can be based on Power BI or it can be based on your Excel also. So you can use the, the beauty about this particular tool is that you don't need only the Power BI to do this. You can even extract these data models in Excel spreadsheet. So that's how is the architecture or data architecture for this particular tool is. Now, uh, by now we understood what BPA is, what are the guiding principles, how it has been designed, keeping the business process in and sub processes in mind. And then we talked about how the ETL process is happening for creating the data models here, right? Now, to talk about the key configurations here, we need to understand what are the things which we need to do here. First thing is this is in preview mode. So we need to understand that. And then you have to have the version 10.0.38 for this to use. You need to have a tier two box uh, of Dynamics FNO. You need to have the Power Platform uh, deployed with your FNO, uh, uh, FNO instance. So all these things are required, uh, and then you can you can look at these prerequisites at the official Learn portal, and you can understand that step by step how do you enable all these things. 
one thing which you will notice common is that any feature which Microsoft is releasing nowadays related to Copilot AI or any advanced analytics or anything, you need all these things in your environment to be configured. So these are most of the things are very common. Uh, if you configure once for any other application uh, or any other feature you will have for this particular feature as well. The last step is the installation of the app into your Power Platform Admin Center. Now currently what Microsoft has done, if you will visit their page, they have the link for requesting the app uh, uh, app installation from the normally you can log into the app source of Microsoft and download the app. But in this case they have provided a link where you can fill out the detail of your organization in the environment details and Microsoft will send you the URL for downloading this particular app. This might change in coming feature. They directly give you the app source link, but I understand why they are doing this because they possibly wants to collect the feedback and understand that uh, from the market how many people are using this particular tool and how how how's the attraction about this particular tool they are having. A uh, few uh, things which you need to understand about this particular tool is that it is part of it is going to be part of your standard finance license of FNO, which means you are not going to pay anything extra for this particular tool. So that's a very good thing which Microsoft has thought. So uh, you might currently if you understand if you have to create such models and the reporting for your customers, you dip, you create your data warehouse or data lake and all those things and those things are the additional cost for your customer. Now your customer has to pay extra for that. But in this case, you customer need not to pay anything if this is coming in a GA release. About the data availability, so it has a four years of rolling period data, which means the current year plus the historical three years data is available, which you can use for your reporting. Uh, Excel feature, which I spoke about, uh, is, is going to be available when there is a GA release. Currently, uh, you can use using the Power BI uh, tool and, uh, and, and create your <coughs> reports here. Now uh, let's go to the demo and let's uh, look at that how this particular application looks like. So I'm going to show you that. So uh, before uh, I go to that part, like uh, how you can access this particular tool is that you can uh, uh, you can just log into your Dynamics environment and on your Dynamics environment you would uh, you will you will see that there is an app which is app, uh, available on the home page. So if you click on that particular app, you will be able to log into this particular portal and which is the power platform based on the power platform. Now here you have different options available. If you look at this uh, uh, left hand side, you have the reports. These are the out of the box reports which Microsoft provides you. Uh, based on the standard uh, data model which are available. Now it is similar to your financial reporter. You can think of that like how your 22 reports are available there. Similarly, the, these reports are available here. Before I go and talk about these reports, how it looks, how you can use them, I need to talk about a very important feature which uh, this particular tool has is about the security control. Now, just imagine uh, you have this tool. Now, nowadays you also have, let's say you have implemented a data model or Power BI reports are working for your customer and everything is fine. But one of the challenge you might also face and customer asks that the what about the data security, right? So I am having the, let's say five different legal entities and then I'm having business unit, the cost centers and the departments. Is there a feature which is available where I can uh, basically control my users and restrict them based on these dimensions, right? Now this particular tools provides you that option. So you can configure your security based on the different dimensions which are available. Currently it supports your five dimensions here. So you can select those dimensions. I have selected let's say these dimensions, but you can click on this select dimension here 
and it is going to load all the default dimensions which are supported in this particular tool which include your financial dimensions and the other dimensions are legal entities and the ledgers and other things which you have it. So you can select up to five dimensions uh, by which you want to uh, create your uh, report or uh, create your security control, right? So that is what is available as part of uh, the dimensions. Once these dimensions are selected, the next thing which you can do is that you can group these dimensions into the combination and understand these dimensions group as a combination of the financial data, uh, financial uh, dimension set which you have it, where you can have a combination of the uh, business unit plus department or legal entity and other things. So here using those financial dimensions which you have uh, or, or the dimensions, reporting dimensions which you have selected, you can create your dimension group. So in this dimension group, if you take an example, I'm saying that I want to select these two legal entities, these two cost center and this department. And I can have another uh, 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 dimension group where I can select a different legal entity, different business unit, cost center and the department. Now, what is the meaning of these dimension set? What I'm saying that if I have this dimension group and if I assign this to a user, then that user will be able to see the data related to this legal entity, related to this business unit and this cost center and this department. So I want to define my access or I want to restrict my users based on these dimensions and the dimension group. So once you have these dimensions, uh, you can go to the users and then you can specify that uh, which dimension group that particular user should be accessing. So you can just attach the dimension group here uh, uh, based on your users. Apart from that, you can also define your different security roles here. So you can create your own custom security role and then you can map it to your users and then on your users you can map the applicable dimension group. So that, I mean, this is a very, I feel it's a very powerful feature which Microsoft has provided from the data security and the access perspective. Once that is done, that's about your configuration and things. Apart from that, uh, as I said, you can even extend your uh, this tool with your existing fabric environment where you are already having some data, external data sources where you must be uh, doing your uh, reporting. So let's say with the Dynamics data, you want to include a CRM data or maybe a third party applications where the data is there and you want to combine both the data sets and do your reporting. So you can even do that. You can extend that, okay? But now let's talk about the reports which we have, what we can do. So these are the out of the box reports which Microsoft has provided. Uh, as I said, currently they have uh, uh, built only the R2R uh, and the P2P focus report, O2C and other processes are still pending. So for, and, and it gives you the, you can create the type of reports which are both like analytical reports, a dashboard and the tabular format or anything, right? So if you look at this particular one, which is your uh, financial performance one, here you can see that you have the overall financial performance of your in, any any legal entity or the group of legal entities which you can have. You can have a different filters available here, right? So that's that's about the dashboard, but you can even have some traditional uh, reports which are like balance sheet or income statement. So you can define all those uh, reports and you can use the out of the box reports which are available here for all the legal entities by the different uh, year column and the budget and actuals and the variance and everything is available here. So that's the second category of the report which you can have it. But apart from that, you can also have some critical reports like, you know, like a vendor aging or the customer uh, aging report, which is very difficult to create in any of the uh, Power BI tool or things. And not only it is difficult to create, but also to have the holistic view of multiple legal entities is really difficult if you want to design those reports. So you have this uh, these these reports available out of the box. In the in the data sets which Microsoft is providing you, right? So this is about the reports which you already have uh, as part of this offering. But what about 
like self service reporting which i was talking about that's where is the real power this particular tool is having so you can create your own report from the scratch or you can duplicate or extend the report which is already available out of the box so let's say if i want to create a new report i can just create a report for the let's say session report new report i want to create i can select a tool uh, by which i want to use this report so let's say i will keep the power bi here then i can say that i'm want to duplicate a report which is already available or i want to start from the blank so it's up to me that how i want to create this particular report so i will say that i want to start from the blank so i'm creating a new report so this will create a report and then i can modify or edit or access the data sets which is available here so I have this report which I just now created. This is available here. Now I need to click on edit to create this particular report. Now the moment I do the edit for this particular report, now I can see that the canvas like a Power BI uh, kind of a workspace is available for me to design my report. I have the different options here where I can give the uh, report name. So let's say uh, I want to create a test report so I can do this. I can provide all these uh, uh, informations here which I can use that. But more important from this is the, the access of this particular data set and it is very important for us to understand that how this uh, data set has been created. Now one thing which you understand I was talking about the fact and the dimension and you will understand now why I was talking about the fact and dimension at that place. Now everyone don't uh, uh, I mean everyone didn't understand about the analytics and the core power BI skill set, but you need to understand some basics the fact and dimension and the use of those things. Now what Microsoft has done they have made it very easy. Anything which is the dimension table they have prefix with the dim. OK, so everything will be dim and anything which is a fact table, they have prefix with the fact and they have also provided some metrics and also provided some filters which are commonly used like date, currency, criteria or any number type. So all these things are available in your data sets which you might build in a month's time for any customer. Now it is inbuilt and it is out of the box for you available, right? Now, how do I use this, right? What, what I can do with this? How can I build my own report? So I can just build my report like taking any example. So let's say I want to uh, I want to create a report uh, for my all the purchase orders. I will take a purchase order example because the P2P and the journal ledger is only available, not the sales side. So let's say I want to have a legal entity buys uh, data for me. So I have added, let's say, the legal entity here. And let's say if I want to also create this report for a specific legal entity, then I can just fix this uh, filter of one of the legal entity here. So I can just say that I just want a USMF, uh, let's say, the data uh, or data from the USMF legal entity. So I can just filter this and I can lock the filter here so that no one is able to change that. OK, now next thing is that I want the vendors like for for my PO. So vendors are defined as a dimension. So that's a dimension because I want to slice and dice the data by, by that and that has been created as a selling party here. So I can just select the account name here and it is going to give me all the vendors which I'm having. Now after this, I want to have all my purchase order numbers uh, so I can go to my purchase order number table and then I can select all my purchase orders here. So all my purchase orders are listed here. Now even I can go to a one level down where I can say that I want the purchase order line number also. So I can even go to the down, uh, go down to a lower level of line number. So that's what I was explaining that you have a granular level of details which are available here. But for now, let's say if I go with this now, this is just a simple dimensions which I have it. But what about a value which I want to add here? So let's say I can go and add some facts around this and I can go to the amounts and say that I want to have the amount of the line, right? So what is the amount I'm having for a for for each purchase order? What's the line amount? 
And also if I want to know the quantity of this, so I can do this. So now you understand that like how easy it is for you to create your own reports based on the transactions which you have recorded, right? Not only this supports your like, let's say this is a simple list page which you have created, but it also you can also create some different types of dashboard. So let's say if I want to have a pie chart here and in this pie chart, I want to see, let's say uh, I, I can use some metrics which are available here and where I can say, uh, let's say the invoice uh, uh, invoice amount if I want to have like purchase invoice amount. So uh, let's say I want to have the total invoice amount as a fact here, but I want to see this by let's say different currency. Then what I can do is that I can go here and add a currency here. Now it is I have a chart which is like giving me that the total invoice amount which I have for my legal entity. I can see this by the different currencies here, right? And so on. So I can create any bar chart or any pie chart or this drill down reports or anything which I want. I can just create it by myself using this particular tool. And once that is done, you can just uh, save this report and then this report will be available for you to use here, right? Now, one of the thing which we have uh, uh, about this particular tool is that the data refresh, right? So currently what Microsoft says that once it is having a GA release, the data will be refreshed twice a day, which is within the 24 hours of cycle time where uh, you can uh, where the every 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. the data refresh will happen, but it is in the still in preview phase right now. So the data refresh for the preview phase uh, is the 24 hours. So right now it is refreshing only once in a 24 hours of cycle time. But going forward, like once this is GA release, you will have the data refresh uh, more in, in one. I mean two two times a day. So that's about this creating a report, but even you, you I mean, that's that's one part, but even you can have a, a, a new report which you can, uh, I mean, the existing report which you can uh, modify and that you can just simply by doing the duplicate. So let's say this is my purchase order report and I want to add something or remove uh, something from here. I can just create a duplicate of this particular report and then based on the uh, I mean based on that I can just edit that particular report. So it has created a one more version for this and I can just uh, hit the edit here and now I have everything available here which I want if I want to change anything I can just uh, change it here and add the things and I can see that I have all the details which are available here. So let's say I want to uh, remove the status, right? Which I don't want to have it here. I can just remove the status from here and the my re report will change accordingly. And then I can just simply save this report. Or if I want to add something from the existing data set, I can even add that information here. So that's how uh, you can uh, create your report uh, your, from the scratch or you can uh, modify the reports and you can even define the uh, security privileges to access these reports based on the users and the different dimensions which you have uh, in this particular tool. So yeah, so that's it. Uh, uh, that was a quick demo and the overview about this particular tool. I'm happy to take questions if you have got any questions here. How can we differentiate the electronic reporting uh, uh, with CPA and so on? Electronic reporting is very different, right? So the purpose of electronic reporting is not your business or financial reporting or the analytical reporting or the data analysis, right? Your electronic reporting is majorly used for your documents based reporting. For example, you want to have your payment files created uh, which you want uh, for your supplier payment or you want to have a e-invoicing document which you want to uh, create 
or any regulatory related things which you want to have it right for those purpose you can use the electronic reporting so that is the purpose uh, majorly for the electronic reporting uh, whereas this particular tool is completely focused on your business and financial reporting which helps you to analyze your data on your day to day business transactions which you are performing um i have one question now since this um, this report looks like a power bi i mean it is like a power bi report so i my question is like do we need to have uh, i mean use any kind of code which usually the power bi users do right when they are trying to uh, create a report it's not just a drag and drop they also use some kind of uh, codings as well to get a report which is required by the users so do we do we need to do any kind of uh, codings in this kind of reports not at all and that's what is the microsoft solving and reducing the effort that you don't need a technical person to do anything so this is based on your data what you are recording within the finance and operation the data model is already available for you all the technical work has been done by microsoft the framework is available now you just need to create your reports now there is a possibility that you do some customization in your fno for example you add certain fields you add new table now obviously that won't be available in your standard data model which is there right so you need to perform some extension for that but as far as it is about the standard processes and the sub process in the transactions which you have it will be available out of the box you don't need to perform or you need to you don't need to develop anything understood thank you yeah. yes sorob i have question uh, i have uh, take your lecture about the consolidations you have run the consolidation on the mr and uh, but uh, can we run the consolidation on uh, in this tool yeah i mean see again uh, when you say run the consolidation means what see a running consolidation is bit different and reporting consolidation is bit different right so if you are saying that i have five different legal entities right and i want to rip, i want to have the consolidated report for all five legal entities for my balance sheet or pnl or trial balance right so yes you can do that because it is extracting the data from your own legal entity the ledger transaction data set is available for you right so that is possible right and this you can compare with your financial report so there are two ways people do the consolidation currently one is they use the consolidation module within the application and then uh, do the cons transaction consolidation and create the reports based on that that's one option right but a lot of people also do the financial reporting using the extracting the data from your individual legal entities and put a formula of adding the all the legal entities data and 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 present at a consolidated number so if we are talking about that particular approach so yes you can do that here but from the reporting perspective specifically for consolidation there are some challenges you might face like if you have different currencies so how do you adjust your currency uh, adjustments and, and 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 so on maybe different calendars are there so when you consolidate one legal entity might have jan to december ca calendar one might have a june to uh, july to june calendar and so on so th there might be some challenges when you are designing this report but yeah you can do it in in long run i see that you can use for rip consolidation reporting as well this particular tool okay thank you it's mean uh, if the company is in the same country and the same calendars and just simply we are just getting the balance sheet report and revenue report and profit and loss of all the legal entity consolidate them then we can use that tools it is easy to use it, it is it is easy to use but if you have multiple calendars currencies and things it there might be some some thought process you need to put in and and also 
uh, bear in mind that right now it is in preview feature, so we don't know like in next six months or seven months if Microsoft improves on this tool and provides more features around that. And I mean, possibly they might come up with their out of the box consolidated report itself, right? Or for the elimination and other things, right? So, so yeah, let let's be hopeful for that. Like if Microsoft gives something. Thank you, sir. No worries. Any other question? No questions. I think we don't have any questions out of. That's good. Thank you guys then. Uh, I think we can wrap up the session then. I gave you almost 15 minutes back. Azam raised his hand once again, Azam. Yes, yes. I have just one question more. Uh, I want to know, uh, is that module is uh, available in the new version? Yes, it is available. And uh, I explained possibly like process, like so you need to configure your power platform with your LCS and the environment which you have. You need to have the uh, data was enabled or, or it should your power platform admin center should be connected. And based on that, you can request the inst uh, link from the app source and you can install the app, app in your power platform admin center and then you can start using this. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, hi, yeah. uh, just, a, just a question. Do you have some models regarding production? In your oh, uh, so in, in this your particular setup report, tool? yes, yes. Uh, I I think that so currently in the preview phase, they have just released uh, the for their their focus processes are P two P and the uh, record to report two processes. Mm. Okay. Uh, and I think in future they are going to focus on the production. Uh, I mean the manufacturing yes. processes as well. Yes. Definitely, uh, this is going to come. Yes, because I, I have some customer would be really interested to to make uh, um, uh, a link between uh, how much they sell and how much they produce what uh, what going to scrap and and all this kind of production uh, 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 completely agree i think this tool is going to be a game changer in terms of yes, winning the customer's exactly. uh, mind in terms of reporting we never had a a uh, single oh, tool where we can do these uh, these reporting and things. So definitely, and yes, all these processes will be covered in my opinion in the future release uh, by the mic Microsoft. Yes, it could be a very uh, good uh, complement between what you expect with uh, electronic reporting. We can help to uh, produce some few elements and and to make a communication, uh, for like a payment file and so on. And this, which is really dedicated for cost controlling and, and, and ratio between uh, the cost and, and, and the product. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, next, uh, Usha, I think you have some question. I wanted to see if uh, there, you said there is no additional license cost, but uh, will there be any impact in the performance or any additional storage uh, costs involved uh, if you enable this functionality? Uh, I don't think so. So first thing is performance definitely won't be impacted because if you looked at the data architecture which I was talking about, so the extraction happens from your FNO database and it goes to your managed data lake which gets deployed when you install this particular application, right? So I don't see the, the performance impact and that, the performance is kept in the mind and that's the reason they are just saying that they will refresh the data twice in a day so that it is not having any uh, performance impact right so so i think performance impact won't be there uh, as a license i think they say there is no additional license which is required and i i mean i don't see as of now that any additional cost you will incur for managing this it might be the storage, uh, the the managed data lake, which might come with your uh, uh, with, with your production or the environment which you are deploying. Possibly with that, if this, it might consume the storage uh, more uh, in comparison to what it is consuming today, 
and that in a longer run might be an additional cost for you from the storage perspective possibly that's that's what i can uh, think of as of now so if we enable this in different environments for example um you deploy this application in sandbox um um and in production now does it create two different data lakes yep one for each environment okay. yes Okay. Any other question? Anyone? I think good. We are good to wrap up. Uh, thank you again for joining the session, taking out time, and possibly Ramit will communicate more about the recordings and everything, which will be available in some time in couple of days or maybe tomorrow. Super. Yeah. yeah. Super. Thank you, Saurabh. Thank you, everyone.